You're welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and share this video. Help me expand this science community. Much love from me to you. Enjoy watching. Are you ready to score big in your YEC chemistry practicals or are you about to lose about 20 crucial marks without even knowing it? You might know how to perform the experiments, get the correct endpoints, and even do your calculations right. You will still lose huge marks because of tiny mistakes, poor presentations of your answers, and not understanding YX marking scheme. Will cost that. Today, I will show you exactly what to do to secure your marks and boost your grade. If you're a chemistry teacher too, and you have been wondering why your students aren't achieving the A1 grade in YX chemistry, the issue might lie in how they present their work in the answer script. Even with excellent teaching, many students still end up with C4 or B3, even though they are brilliant, instead of excelling. If your school avoids examination of practice, but students, your students still struggle, this video will highlight exactly where things go wrong for both teachers and students. After watching, you will understand how to tackle these presentation pitfalls and improve your results, of course. Securing at least 90% of the marks for practicals gives you, and your student, that gives your students higher chance, a higher chance of making an A1 grade, which gives them a higher chance of getting admission into university. Even schools involved in my practice are also affected by this. The key is mastering proper presentation and understanding the right techniques to be used. In this case, what are those techniques? What are those things you should not do to avoid losing marks? Number one, don't write any part of the practical with pencil. It is called WIP. And I, I'm telling, I'm talking to my co-teachers, teaching chemistry is good, but not enough. You can also engage in marking WIEG so that you will know these rules and teach your student directly, not just to know the answers. Even if you can't mark, you take your time to attend the audition or look into the marking scheme and see changes that are involved. So avoid writing any parts of the answers. Answering any part with pencil. The penalty is that you will lose two marks, be counting them. And before then, I want to tell you that WIEG practical sums up 50 50 percent that's 50 marks that is paper three then paper one which is objectives is also 50 marks and paper two which is the theory is also 100 marks which sums up 200 marks after which this will be narrowed down to read at 70 you watch my full video on the wayek marking scheme seminar to understand more about this so to understand how wayek marks you watch my full video a seminar video on it here on this channel then Apart from answering with pencil, you are not allowed to cancel your titration table. Canceling your titration table and adjusting them, manipulating them to rhyme with that of the teacher will attract minus four. Minus four. So we are looking at 50% here and you have lost four and another two for writing in pencil. So you should avoid it. Then next is avoid mutilating your end point, your values, even though you did not cancel the table, but you mutilated your values to ensure they rhyme with that of the teacher. Teachers like, there is a different thing here. The other one, you cancel the table entirely, you make another table, and it's now rhyming with what the teacher have, minus four. But the table is not cancelled, but inside that table, you mutilated your values. You mutilated your titration values to make it rhyme. Let's assume where you know that you are about 0 0.1 away from concordant title as you shifted it to rhyme. You altered it, maybe 14.10, the other one will have 14.60, the other one will have 14.80. You see, they are not concordant. Maybe you now force yourself to change 14.10 to 14.40, and they notice it minus two marks. Next is avoid arithmetic error. Like when you say two plus two, you now write three. It's arithmetic error. If you don't compute well, that's minus one. Secondly, obey two decimal places. Two decimal places, meaning your title values must be written in two decimal places. Even when it is 14 as the end point, you write it 14.00. If you don't write it constantly, writing only in one decimal place, you will lose two marks. But when you write some in one decimal place and the other values on your table in two decimal places, you lose one mark. You are now almost 10 marks away from the 50. What are you now fighting for? So I advise you stay calm and secure the whole mark. Next, 
avoid using a formula without making the parameter you are looking for subject of the formula, which means always make subject of the formula before plugging in your values. Let's assume we are using CAVA over CBVB equals NA over NB. And we are looking for CB. Always make that CB the subject of the formula, telling the marker that CB is equal to CAVA NB divided by VB over NA before you start putting the values. But when you allow it in that CAVA form, and start putting your values to get your answer minus two marks. Next is to obey three, three significant figures where necessary. Don't, don't approximate the values in your question paper. Meaning, if you see 0 0.05, don't make it 0 0.1. Never you. Work according to the decimal and significant figures in the question paper. If the question paper says that A is a, is, is, is a solution containing 0 0.125, are you saying 125? Three significant figures, three decimal places. Always keep your answer in that way. So three significant figures are usually advised so that you don't lose two marks. Then, if you don't fill your initial and fill your final and volume of uh, A used or B used, you will lose two marks also. Then, what if somebody mistakenly added the titrant in the wrong one and added the analyte in the wrong one? See what I mean? Maybe you are told to add B in burette. And you went and added A in burette. Maybe your teacher have already told you that A must be in burette, which is not true. Watch that few video so that you understand the concept, how work marks and how they label the spacemen, what you are required to know. Here, I'm trying to give you the summary of it. So if you put the wrong one, maybe if you put what should be in burette and pipette it, you, they will say mark and do what? Subtract formats so after marking you the subtract format we are looking at around 15 marks lost or 16 now then what if a teacher mistakenly refused to put the 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 there is what we call teacher's report if a teacher omits that the rule is that the, the, the marker should go through the whole script and find out the most recurrent value and use as the endpoint. Why this is risky is that the wrong people might pass and the right person will fail. It depends now on the number of people. There can Majority can be making mistakes. Majority can be doing an error and they will use it to judge a student that is very, very right. Then, avoid failing yourself by using values that are not concordant. Please, the values you use for your averaging that's to determine the average volume of acid must be concordant there are there are values that are within plus or minus 0 0.1 or at maximum plus or minus 0 0.2 for you to secure the highest mark if in your table there is no two at least two concordant values used in your titration table and uh, that's those ones you use in determining the average volume of a definitely because that should be there, there is two there is a rule that says Two concordant titers, four times two, eight marks. Are you seeing where that 20 or 20 something marks come? So if you don't use concordant title values, we are not talking about rhyming with the teacher exactly. But if you don't use your own value, it's not within the range of 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. You will lose at least four marks. Then, coming to the teacher's report, if your values is 0 0.15 away from what the teacher recorded or within 0 0.15, you have four over four. If it is 0 0.2 from what the teacher recorded, you have 3 over 4. Meaning, if I recorded 14.5 as my endpoint and the students have 14.70 as the endpoint, such a student will score 3 over 4. If another person have 14.50, uh, 14 Five five. Remember, you can have five five in your average, but not on that table. So such a person now will score four over four. But if somebody have about fourteen point three zero, remember my own teacher's report is fourteen point five. You see that fourteen point three zero is still zero point two below. The person will still score three. What about somebody that have fourteen on the dot? The person will have zero. What about somebody that score fourteen point two? You are now zero point three away. You will have what two max two over four. If you have fourteen point one. That is 4, 0 0.4 away, you have 1 over 4. But when you have 0 0.5 far away from the teacher's endpoint, you have 0. If the endpoint the teacher recorded is 14.5 and somebody is getting something like 13.9, you have 0 over 4. But that doesn't mean you are going to fail everything. So apply these rules, you will secure your mark. Then another thing is always put units. 
after answers. So wrong unit or no unit means no score. So with this, I believe you will improve and see the success your students or you yourself will record in this wired practical. So it's not all about what's the correct endpoint. It is all about the presentation. Are you following the rules? Thank you for watching. Stay majestic. Please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. I commend and I thank all my followers. I cannot do without you, but for you that is coming here now, if you have not subscribed, please do so to expand the science community. Take care of yourself for some majesty loves you. Thank you.